Using the for loop as an expression with a yield actually brings up something that might be nice to have, and that is the possibility to not always produce a value. And indeed, we can do this by introducing something called an if guard into our for loops. So imagine the situation we had before a loop like this, where I do 1, 2, 10, and I want to get the squares of the values. Okay, we saw how to do that. What if I only want the values that are even, though? Well, normally, if we wanted something like that, we would, at this point, say i modulo 2 is 0. But in the context here, this for loop is going to yield a value for every i. And I don't know if, if you remember what happens when we leave off an else. Right now, this doesn't do anything for the else, which means it actually produces unit. And then we get a collection of any val, which really isn't useful to us. And so we have a unit and a 4 and a unit and a 16. This isn't useful at all. And it turns out that if we're doing a yield, we can't do the if here. We need the if to kind of happen inside of the for construct itself. And that is where the if guards come in. So we can put inside of here, I need to separate it by a semicolon. We can say i modulo 2 equals 0. And I'll let's put in an if. Note that this if does not have parentheses. You can put parentheses if you want, whereas the normal if has to be followed by parentheses. Inside of the for loop, the if guard, the parentheses are optional. But now we only get values for things where this condition was true. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, I could have simply had it start at 2 and then go by 2. But of course, the if guard allows us to do more complex things, like I only want to do this for things that are not multiples of 3 or 5, something like that. Okay, we can put in something where simple steps on the range aren't going to give us what we want, and we actually have to use the if guard. There is another syntax that you can use. Uh, it is possible, as we'll see, we can put quite a few things inside of our for loop. Having these semicolons in there, some people aren't real fond of that, and a lot of times people will put these on each of these on a separate line. You can do that if instead of parentheses you use curly braces. And so a syntax that people, that you might see in people's Scala code is something like this. If i modulo 2 is 0, yield i times i. It does exactly the same thing, but when I use the curly braces, I don't have to put in semicolons. If I and I can I separate things between each line, uh, so it's kind of like what you would look what things would look like inside of a normal code block, but we just have this inside of our for loop. And there are a number of places in Scala where that syntax is a bit easier to structure and to read.